I am Jeroen and this summer I worked on the Movitz OMPL interface. So OMPL had the functionality for planning with Cartesian path constraints for a long time. Here is an example from the website where we plan for the NASA's Robonai 2, which involves a lot of Cartesian constraints. Why do we need this into Movit? So Movit already has a, a planner to plan with Cartesian path constraints uh, as presented by Mark earlier. So one of them was a postmodal planner, but this planner has some issues as there are these joint space jumps, as you can see in the animation. So sometimes a robot flips an axis and this is not executable on a real robot. So with a new planner, we hopefully can solve this problem and also solve a lot of other problems. So here we have a myriad of examples. So in the left upper corner, we have a simple example with position constraints while avoiding the green obstacle. So in every animation, the green box is an obstacle and then the gray box in the upper left are position constraints. In the upper middle, we have another interesting example where we move along a line in Cartesian space, but there is no constraint that um, makes the robot move forward along this line in this case. So we can see that the robot moves backward a little bit, reorient itself, and then goes through the obstacles, in between the obstacles. Then in the upper right, we have a simple example with orientation constraints on the same robot. And in the lower left, we have this welding example. So interesting there is that we have position and orientation constraints, but we have some tolerance on the orientation so we can avoid collision with the green box. Of course, this uh, actual plan is not uh, good for a, for a real welding robot, so we would, would need some reparametrization or something to make the speed along the welding path constant. Then we have two other examples. So in the bottom middle, we have simple orientation constraints on the Panda robot while avoiding collision with the box. And then on the lower right, we have just a, an interesting <laughs> illustration of sometimes what can go wrong with orientation constraints. Um, so the, the projection-based sampling onto orientation constraints, it's sometimes difficult to visualize and then you, um, while programming the interface, I got these weird results sometimes. So how does it work? So everything in OMPL is sampling-based motion planning. And I have a simple example here to explain the concept. So we have here a two-link robot manipulator that has to keep his end effector inside this green box. So these are the Cartesian path constraints. And then if we want to plan for a motion, we can also represent this in joint space. And so in joint space, we can get random joint uh, robot configurations and then some of them will have the end effector inside the green box and others not so these are the greens are the valid ones and then the reds are invalid so the idea is if we want to plan a path that we plan a path inside this green region in joint space using these green samples so how is it done in move it now in with the OMPL interface we have rejection sampling, where we generate random samples in joint space. And then we check for every sample, whether it's valid or not, and we throw away the invalid samples. And then we get the picture on the left. The problem with this approach is that if you have constraints that look for like a line in joint space or have zero volume in joint space, the probability that you, you will generate valid samples randomly is, is low or zero. And so we cannot use this planner for that planning case. The other planner, the postmodal state space, plans mainly in Cartesian space, and then we can solve these problems. For example, here, again, the green box, we, instead of generating samples here in joint space, we can generate samples in Cartesian space. And then we can try to find a path here, but then we have to convert it back to joint space to get a path that we can execute on the robot. And this is where the joint space jumps occur sometimes. So if we move, for example, from this point to this point, Cartesian space, it looks fine, but in joint space, it could be that we go through an infeasible region. And then we get this flip of the robot that's not executable. So the new solution or the projection-based sampling 
planner uh, will start the same as the rejection based sampling. So we do we generate random configurations in joint space, but then instead of throwing away the invalid ones, we project them onto the constraints. So this works for this, this constraint region here, but it also works for the zero volume constraints. And so as we are doing planning completely in joint space, we don't have this problem of creating these invisible jumps in the path. Then the implementation, so I added this to the MoveIt OMPL interface, and then we can use the new planner. Here is an example of, a, of an old problem that was problematic, and then the new problem, we see that this is a continuous path that we can execute on the robot, although one could argue that the end effector motion is a bit less ideal, but there were no constraints on orientation, so it's normal. Then I also implement a tutorial using the Python interface. So this should make it really easy to get started with some simple examples. And so the examples in the tutorial are um, just for showing the basics of the interface. And we can plan in a plane or plan along a line from A to B, all for the Panda robot in this case. There were some unexpected issues when implementing this. So it turns out if you project in joint space, sometimes you project outside the joint limits because you take into account the Cartesian constraints, but not the joint limits. And so for some simple cases, up to 80% of the samples were projected outside the joint limits. And so we could not use them. So two solutions I, I tried uh, to address this problem. First is just throw away these invalid samples. And it turns out this works really well because you always will, will get some valid samples. So it's kind of projection-based sampling and then an extra layer of rejection sampling. Or the second solution is uh, you can also add the joint limits to the your model of the constraints. So you can project onto the Cartesian constraints and the joint limits simultaneously. So this also works. Uh, but I just picked one of the two that seemed to work the fastest at the time. Then a second issue, not really an issue, but a difficulty when implementing is that for projecting onto constraints, you have to choose a parametrization for the orientation constraints. And the default parametrization move it uh, uses Euler angles, but this can be problematic uh, for the projection algorithm. So it will often not converge when you use Euler angles. Um, so an alternative is to use um, axis angle representation. So you have a rotation axis and an angle around this axis. And uh, if you multiply the two, you get three numbers that represent orientation error. This is also used in uh, the optimization-based planner Trajopt, which is also being integrated in Movit. So it would be nice if they use the same representation. But the disadvantage of adding this new representation is that if that we have to change the constraints message in Movit, so the orientation constraint message, um, in the past, that only three numbers here that represented the three tolerances around the three rotation axis. And now we added a new parametrization flag so we can choose between different parametrizations. And for now, there will be two, but we could add extra parametrizations in the future. So when should you use this new planner? So as mentioned in the presentation, it can be clear that for zero volume task space constraints, so this is planes, lines, also the, the class of right constraints or carrying containers with water or something uh, fall in this category. And then if you have any problem where you have the joint space jumps, it's always worth to try the other planners in it and especially the, the new planner with OMPL then when not to use it. So if there are no obstacles in your environment, often the other uh, approaches for Cartesian space planning will work fine. So the post model, but even if you don't have obstacles, move with servo, just real time, jogging the arm to a location will work probably, or the new PILS planner, hopefully in the future. Then 
if you have a lo uh, Cartesian constraint that is a very large box, for example, uh, in Cartesian space, then rejection sampling can work fine and you don't necessarily need this projection step. So then you can use the, the currently existing option enforce joint model state space and then you will plan in joint space with rejection sampling. But for all the other problems, the new planner is recommended. Then another advantage is the most of the code for the new interface is, is set up and um, an integration code and a small part of it is the actual constraints and it is this part that you can easily change uh, if you have any any type of new constraints on any link of the robot you want to model you can add it but uh, the disadvantage is that you have pull have to build move it from source which is less ideal maybe with a future uh, move it cpp interface we can address this issue also important if you add constraints yourself, you should really think about adding the uh, Jacobian of the constraints, so the derivative to make a, an analytical derivative to make the planner work fast. Then the code itself. So there are two main pull requests and the review at the moment. So the actual integration into Moveit and then the tutorial pull request. So please, if you're interested, join the discussion and especially for the tutorial, if you have interesting problems that could benefit from it, uh, mention them in the discussion over there. Maybe I can add them. So in conclusion, uh, at the moment, uh, when the pull request is merged, we will get position constraints and after that orientation constraints for the end effector or any link of the robot. Um, and new types of constraints could easily be added, but you have to build from source, of course. And then uh, an interesting future aspect of this is that you can now combine hard constraints with soft constraints. This means that you have the basic position or orientation constraints. These are the hard constraints. You will get a solution that satisfies them and then you can add an objective that you want to optimize. So this is also supported by OMPL and so you can optimize for some objective while satisfying other constraints. And then there is no need anymore to pre-compute the, the constraint database. So this was another feature of Moveit that worked quite well, but now we can plan with the, in the constraint planning space. And then if you save your pre-computed roadmaps, for example, for with PRM, uh, it uh, comes down to the same concept because the roadmap you generate satisfies the constraints. And of course, I would like to thank my mentors, Felix, or Felix, Omid, and Mark, and the Movit maintainers, Michael, Robert, and Tyler, for their generous support during my project. And of course, the Thank you for the opportunity to work on this Google Summer of Code and move it. Are there any questions?